Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday evening, October 4th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We continue to watch uh, now our two storms here, Tropical Storm Gamma in the southern Gulf of Mexico and newly christened Tropical Depression 26 to the south of Jamaica. We're going to briefly talk about Gamma here. If we take in a zoomed in look, this storm came up over the Yucatan Peninsula and has been moving slowly ever since, now located somewhere right about in here, beginning to suffer the impacts of vertical shear out of the southwest and dry air wrapping in from behind this old cold front that remains across the southeastern U.S. And that's what we've been talking about for a few days now, that Gamma is expected to run into significant obstacles by this time in its evolution. And as expected, it's likely to kind of stall out here as it gets sheared off and becomes a shallower vortex. It will start to fall back into the low-level flow toward the southwest and is expected not to stray very far from Mexico during the next few days. But it may take a while to disappear entirely as whatever vortex remains, weak though it might be, uh, will be very slow to go anywhere. And even five days from now, this may still be lingering in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. If we look at the GFS forecast in the mid-levels here, this is the storm in the black contours in the mid-level. Uh, dry air can be seen on the, the western side getting wrapped in now as this moisture gets whisked away by the southwesterly shear. And uh, you'll see this on the model. The storm will just start drifting toward the southwest and really no recovery here forecast by many models and uh, this starts to interact quite strongly with TD26 as you can see here which is the biggest change from yesterday in terms of computer guidance is that gamma is less pronounced in the model fields and TD26 is much more pronounced as models start to catch on to the fact that the storm actually exists. And uh, so these two start to interact with each other, and Gamma may just get rotated around the more powerful TD26 into Mexico. And of course, Gamma may itself exert a little bit of a pivoting influence on TD26 as well. We'll talk about that. Uh, but at the moment, uh, models vary on whether this kind of comes back into the Yucatan or stays uh, out over the Bay of Campeche. But either way, lots of dry air in the vicinity in general may keep this from re-strengthening very much. But it will be sitting around for a few days. We have to keep an eye on it for interests in this area of Mexico. This is the NHC forecast basically showing that progression and then even a turn back toward the north possible in the end. This could just as easily continue all the way into Mexico if TD26 is here to rotate it in like we saw on that GFS forecast. But you can see the general idea here is just slow movement southwestward near the Mexican coastline. Hopefully not uh, generating flash flooding threats for too awful long given that it is now a drying vortex. You can see much less rain on the southern side now. And as this drifts southwest, we'll likely see... Uh, less rainfall with it than when it originally made landfall. So hopefully the flash flooding threat will come to an end, but it will still be close enough to cause possible issues and gusty winds for a few days yet. All right, so if we switch over now uh, back to the big view, the next uh, big storm that we're going to have to discuss is TD26, and a lot has changed since yesterday primarily by virtue of the fact that we can actually see where the thing is. And if you, you look here, you'll see rotation to the south of Jamaica. It's not centered under the thunderstorm clump. It's on the northern side. And a part of that is due to the fact that we do still have that upper trough that it's interacting with. Very sharp, what we call a PV streamer here, northeast wind and then southwest wind on this side, very sharp little trough, very thin, and uh, this is generating this northeast flow that is shearing the storm out of the north. So we have the low-level center in here to the north of the thunderstorm clump. Now, that might look like a lot of shear, but this is actually not a highly detrimental situation for TD26, and one of the main reasons for that is is A, the, the upper level trough will eventually pinch off and weaken here as the storm just kind of barrels through it, if you will, toward the northwest, and uh, eventually it will lose its influence on the storm and the shear will decrease. But secondly, since we already have a concentration of moisture and thunderstorm activity on the southern side and the prevailing flow is out of the southeast, that means the, uh, the uh, easterly flow on the north side of the storm is actually more dominant than the westerly flow on the south side, which means it's much easier to get this moisture to rotate around to the currently dry side of the vortex than vice versa. And so what I'm basically saying is that it's likely that we'll see a symmetrization of the vortex where the thunderstorm activity gets all the way around 
the circulation sooner rather than later. It likely won't be difficult for TD26 to accomplish that, and it's likely uh, in a very organized state for its uh, foreseeable future, and strengthening is likely as it comes northwestward toward the vicinity of Grand Cayman and eventually western Cuba over the next few days. And that track has gained some confidence today because, again, we can actually see where this is. It's been in a messy area for the last several days, and now it's finally ejected out of that mess, and we can see it. And so all of a sudden, the computer models can see what's happening here, and they know that it's there, and now they can actually start issuing real forecasts on it instead of uh, really crappy ones like we've had the last few days. This is the uh, European look at it from this morning showing gamma here and then TD26 south of Cuba. This is for tomorrow morning, Sunday morning. And on the Euro, it moves a rather modest pace here. It uh, takes a couple days to get past Grand Cayman. Not that strong on this model. And it, it doesn't think that much will be here by uh, Monday morning. Uh, and uh, it may be that this is a little stronger than that. We'll have to see. But the Euro is the weakest solution for this storm, but does strengthen it a little bit as it moves past the tip of Cuba and into the southern Gulf of Mexico. If we compare it to the GFS here, you'll see if I go back here to Monday morning. Uh, this is the mid-level map. So you can see the, the moisture field in green and... Uh, is able to strengthen into a modest tropical storm by the time it gets past the Cayman Islands and toward the western tip of Cuba and on into the Gulf of Mexico where it is able to become a hurricane on the model. And if you compare it to just a couple of runs ago from yesterday, the GFS had more gamma, less TD26, which will be named Delta when it becomes a tropical storm. So you can see the later runs now today are latching onto the fact that Delta will actually exist and be a more uh, more of a force in the Gulf than Gamma will be. Now, if we're looking for how this could remain weak, because we do see that the Euro doesn't uh, get super excited about this, this is much weaker than on the GFS. One thing to keep an eye on here will be the dry air lurking currently north of Jamaica here on the model. This is for uh, tomorrow morning, and we can see this on the current water vapor imagery, all this dark color in here all behind this upper level trough that i mentioned is is all this dry air so this could eventually get wrapped into delta's circulation or td 26s circulation as it moves off toward the northwest uh, unlike gamma though there's not expected to be a ton of shear to help force that dry air in so you might see say a little bit here see the lighter gray color on the gfs but the, the prevailing flow is not forcing it into the circulation as much as it uh, was doing for gamma over to the west of TD26. So it's likely to not prevent intensification of TD26, but it might throw a little wrinkle in there that might disrupt the inner core as it's forming. But there's also a high ceiling on this one. You can see the GFS has a modest tropical storm here. It's important to point out that it could be significantly stronger than this if an inner core develops early. And right now we can see already that the circulation has a nice compactness to it. That's dangerous because it could very quickly, if it gets thunderstorm activity wrapped all the way around the north side, become a intense vortex, even if it's smaller. And by the time it gets over past Grand Cayman and toward Cuba, it could potentially uh, be quite strong quite quickly. And we can see this in some of the more aggressive model forecasts, such as H-Wharf, which gets an inner core going sooner. So by tomorrow morning, here we have a, a weak tropical storm, but it's a nice compact size. And again, it's not gonna take much effort for the vortex to close off a ring of moisture around it in this uh, flow setup that it's flowing in. And so it is able to strengthen very quickly to a near hurricane near Grand Cayman, and then very quickly after that into a powerful hurricane near the western tip of Cuba. And this all occurs over the course of the next two days. This is the high end. The GFS and Euro are probably the low end where they only have a tropical storm here, whereas the H-Wharf has a category three hurricane. So a wide range there in the modeling, but it's important to note that uh, this full range of intensity uh, outcomes is likely on the table here, given that we have a compact looking storm that could possibly intensify rather quickly. So we're going to keep a close eye on this. We don't yet know for sure which one of those outcomes is more realistic because we don't yet know if this is going to have an inner core in 24 hours or so. But as it gets past Jamaica tomorrow, we'll probably know more about whether it's actually poised to uh, rapidly intensify during this part of its journey past Grand Cayman and toward Western Cuba. 
Now we have another segment of 26's journey once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico to talk about, because after threatening the Cayman Islands and Cuba, it's likely to threaten the U.S. eventually, as it will be transiting the Gulf of Mexico. Now if we look at the GFS here, if we look at the upper level flow at this time, uh, on late Monday night, we have the storm getting into the Cayman Islands, again southeast flow aloft, we have a big ridge in general over the Northwest Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, low shear at this point for the storm. And so again, strengthening is likely as it gets past Cuba. And this is all very favorable conditions with the possible exception of a little bit of dry air that might be around. Other than that, favors this being a strengthening hurricane as it enters the Gulf. Once it gets to this point though, things may start changing for it. As once it starts moving more northward into the Gulf, we do have this strong uh, southwesterly flow over Texas. There's a big upper trough sitting in here on the edge of the screen, and eventually that will turn this toward the north. And very typical for October, very hard to get these things to come all the way across the Gulf from east to west. So it would be rather difficult to get this all the way into Texas. We're more likely to see some sort of turn toward the right, towards, say, the central Gulf Gulf Coast in here. And that's what we have on the GFS. But as that happens, two things occur. One is that the shear starts to go up a bit. Even though this is a hurricane on the model, it is starting to run into the southwesterly flow aloft. Shear increases. But even more importantly than that, we're again in October and we've had a cold front here for quite some time. Lots of cool air streaming off the Gulf Coast for over a week. And we're later in the season and uh, the shelf water is starting to cool down as a result of these cold fronts coming through for the fall. So if we look at the water temperatures here, obviously very warm in the Caribbean, as it always is very warm in the southern Gulf of Mexico. You start getting close to the U.S. though, and the water gets cooler, not uh, cold enough to prevent a hurricane from existing, but cool enough that a hurricane moving out of the southern Gulf would likely begin to weaken as it approaches the coast, especially in the presence of wind shear. So that is hopefully a good sign that at least some obstacles would stand in the way of a strengthening storm as we've had you know, too many of those occurring near the US coast this season. This one seems less likely to be one that would strengthen as it leads up to landfall. However, that doesn't mean uh, we may not be dealing with a hurricane threat because if it's a strong hurricane in the Gulf, it would take some time to weaken. And even if it's a weakening storm, it may be a powerful one as it moves up into the central Gulf coast. Now, exactly where probably depends on you know where it is on its launching point and how it interacts with gamma we can see here on the the model forecast if the storm is here near cuba on tuesday you know gamma may still be exerting some kind of pinwheeling influence trying to hook this to the left before releasing it to turn north to make its final approach a lot of this will depend on how much of an influence gamma can exert how strong is that remnant circulation right now models have been trending toward less gamma than before. So it's possible that pinwheel motion may not be so strong, but it will depend also on exactly how close to gamma TD26 or delta by this time is. If it's closer to gamma, it will pinwheel more. If it's farther away, closer to the Florida Keys, it would pinwheel less and go straight north without that left hook. Right now, there's still a little bit of uncertainty on that. So for now, we're kind of looking at the model consensus as something kind of in between those two extremes. Here's the GFS ensemble to kind of illustrate that. The range of tracks could bring it either over Western Cuba or maybe even a little closer to the Northeastern Yucatan. And the, the ones closer to the Yucatan are closer to Gamma, swing a little bit farther to the left before coming north into Louisiana, whereas the ones that are closer to Cuba are less affected by Gamma and come up closer to the Central Gulf Coast, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Panhandle, and end up farther east in an eventual landfall. And keep in mind, this is all still about five days away in terms of a U.S. landfall, so lots of room for this track to change and there's uncertainty here can't really nail down which state might get the impacts but it's probably going to be central gulf coast somewhere folks from upper texas to western florida panhandle should be keeping an eye on this as this will likely be a significant storm in the gulf all signs uh, are pointing toward that today and we may also see uh, northeastern mexico which just got hit by gamma be threatened yet again if this deviates at all to the left right now the consensus is closer to cuba than to the yucatan but as some of these ensemble members suggest might not be able to rule out uh, impacts to mexico as well Here's the official forecast from NHC, currently going with the model consensus for the track, closer to Cuba, passing over the western tip of Cuba with a hurricane watch in effect here, 
and uh, a tropical storm warning for the Cayman Islands, though uh, worst case scenario, this could be uh, trying to intensify quickly as it's near those islands. We'll have to see how quickly it gets its act together tomorrow morning, but we could see winds not too far from hurricane intensity in the Cayman Islands potentially, so be on your toes in case this tries to go quickly. Uh, and then from there, hurricane in the Gulf expected by NHC, reaching winds at a maximum of about 100 miles per hour in the northern Gulf. So we very quickly here gone from you know, not being sure where 26 was yesterday to now seeing that it's here, and we're now quickly expecting a hurricane to exist in the Gulf. And uh, we've kind of seen this threat coming for the last few days, but now it's, you know, quite real with the cone of uncertainty threatening many land areas from Jamaica to Cuba to Mexico to the central Gulf Coast, which certainly doesn't need any more hurricanes this year, but unfortunately it looks like we'll probably get one. Again, unlikely to be strengthening as it approaches the U.S., but could be a dangerous storm nonetheless. So we'll keep an eye on this forecast. Room for change, of course, with five days left to work with here. But imminent threats to Jamaica, mostly in the form of flash flooding for folks here. Cayman Islands, again, mostly flash flooding, flooding threat, but winds could uh, get uncomfortably close to hurricane force if this gets its act together quickly tomorrow. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.